Meghan Markle will spend her first Thanksgiving as a member of the royal family this year, following her royal wedding to Prince Harry in May. The Duchess of Sussex has previously revealed her enthusiasm for Thanksgiving, which falls on November 22 this year. And it is the first year that U.S.-born Meghan is a royal for the American holiday after marrying Harry in a stunning Windsor ceremony. Meghan and Harry do not have any engagements set for the date, according to the royal family's diary, meaning the couple could have plans to celebrate Thanksgiving. In an Instagram post in November 2016, Meghan shared her excitement about the holiday. The former actress posted a picture showing her posing with the roast turkey on Thanksgiving. Meghan wrote, Oh, that time I roasted a pretty perfect Thanksgiving turkey. The question is, can I do it again? The pressure is on. Next month Meghan will celebrate Christmas with the royal family for the second year. Meghan joined the royals last year in an unprecedented move, as Meghan was not yet married to Harry. And Meghan's mother, Doria Raglan, is said to have been invited to join the royal family for Christmas Day this year. The royal family spends Christmas and New Year at the Queen Sandringham House country residence in Norfolk. Royal Christmas traditions include opening their presents on Christmas Eve, in a nod to their German roots. The royal family's website says, on Christmas Eve, the royal family lay out their presents on dressel tables and will exchange their gifts at tea time. And the Queen attends church every year on Christmas Day with other royals. Crowds of well-wishers gather outside St. Mary Magdalene Church on Christmas Day to see the royal family. Meghan stepped out with Harry in 2017 for her first festive church service. Questions about the Duchess of Sussex's Thanksgiving plans come after royal fans speculated if Meghan had voted in the U.S. midterm elections earlier this month. Meghan has expressed strong political views in the past but members of the royal family traditionally remain neutral. Kensington Palace refused to comment when asked by Express.co.uk if Meghan had voted. The Queen believes Prince Charles will jeopardise the future of the monarchy and if the heir apparent to the British throne does not temper his strong views a royal biographer has claimed. In an unauthorised explosive biography called Rebel Prince, The Power, Passion and Defiance of Prince Charles published earlier this year, author Tom Bower argued the Prince will have to face a strong battle as he never recovered in the eyes of the British public after the death of Princess Diana. Speaking in a recent interview, Mr. Bauer also revealed the Queen and Prince Philip are glad their son has not become king already. He said, I think Charles will try his hardest to be a good king. The question will be how he behaves, whether he abandons a lot of the qualities that were shown in the preceding 20, 30 years. I do believe the Queen and Prince Philip have been thankful to live so long to prevent their son being the monarch because he would have jeopardized it. Mr. Bauer is noted for unauthorized biographies of prominent figures including Robert Maxwell, Mohammed Fade, Bernie Ecclestone, Tony Blair, and Sir Richard Branson. In Rebel Prince, Mr. Bauer claimed Charles is intelligent, kind sensitive but also ungrateful, selfish and a lover of luxury whose stubborn streak could risk damaging the institution itself. Mr. Bower's remarks about the Queen's concerns of her son jeopardizing the monarch do not come as a surprise, as the author had already claimed in the unauthorized biography that the Duke of Edinburgh did not hide his scorn for his son's achievements and vision and showed little confidence that Charles could impress himself upon history as an exceptional king. He pointed out that Charles, a landowner hankering for a forgotten world, could not unify 21st century Britain but instead his willfulness could cause a constitutional crisis which would jeopardize the monarchy's very existence. While the Queen was a unifier, Mr. Bower said, Charles does the opposite. He divides the nation between those who like him and dislike him. He divides his own court, he creates hostility when he should be creating harmony and that's his trait. Former aides, who have worked closely with Charles dismissed many of the stories in Mr. Bower's biography is simply not true. A source close to Charles said, I can understand why critics will write negatively, but all they're doing is taking a facet of him and making it the most negative possible. 
It's not such a contradiction that people have these polar views of him because somewhere in the middle is the real man. Princess Margaret was a fascinating woman with immense star power, however it has been claimed that Margaret never found the happiness she deserved because of her elder sister, the Queen. A witty, glamorous and rebellious character, the Queen's younger sister was nicknamed the Royal Rebel. Time magazine noted that Margaret's increasingly sober face in news pictures seemed to reflect a deeply troubled heart. There were claims that Margaret always lived in her sister's shadow, and her entire life, she endured endless scrutiny as she tried her best to navigate her life as a royal. In documentary William and Harry, Brothers in Arms, Royal editor Ingrid Seward discussed the relationship between Prince Harry and Prince William, and how Harry could have felt overshadowed by his elder brother. Mrs. Seward explains, I think it's very difficult being the second son because you don't really have a defined role. The royal expert then claims, when you look at Princess Margaret, she never found the happiness she should have done. She was always completely in the shadow of her elder sister, because her elder sister was queen and Princess Anne said she used to feel like an ulceran. Even as a child, Margaret was always branded as the sister most likely to behave badly. In an interview, Margaret said, When my sister and I were growing up, she was made out to be the goody-goody one. That was boring so the press tried to make out that I was wicked as hell. While Princess Margaret was clearly in awe of her older sister, the world's longest reigning monarch, she also felt protective of her. The reality of monarchy author Andrew Duncan recalls a conversation with Margaret, In my own humble way I've always tried to take some of the burden off my sister. By most accounts, Elizabeth and Margaret had a close bond, despite their differing personalities and roles in the royal family. But Margaret did struggle with her own position as princess, and the shadow that her sister cast over her life. Vanessa Kirby, who portrayed Margaret in the first two seasons of The Crown, saw her life this way, in one sense, she had such a voice, but she also wasn't able to really own what she wanted in her life. And much of that struggle came from being the Queen's sister. According to a confidant of Margaret's, she once said, I guess I'll be second best to my grave. The princess scandalized the monarchy in the 50s when she fell in love with a married man. Royal Aid Group Captain Peter Townsend, who was 16 years older and had two children. By the time she was in her 50s, Margaret began to suffer frequent health problems. In 1985, she had a section of her lung removed. In 1998, she had a stroke. The following year, she spent several weeks in the hospital after scalding her feet in a bathing accident that limited her mobility for the rest of her life. Princess Margaret died at the age of 71 on February 9, 2002, just seven weeks before the death of her mother on March 30, 2002. Margaret was born in Scotland in 1930, the second daughter of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. She was forbidden from marrying Captain Townsend because he was a divorcee, something that caused great controversy in the press. After the end of their romance, Princess Margaret and her future husband, Anthony Armstrong Jones, were introduced at a dinner party in May 1958. They got married in a lavish wedding at Westminster Abbey in 1960 and were later made Count and Countess of Snowdon. The royal couple had two children, Viscount David Lindley in 1961 and Lady Sarah Armstrong Jones in 1964. Meghan Markle, 37, is pregnant, she and Prince Harry, 34, are expecting a baby in the spring. What name might they choose? According to a royal expert the Queen might let them have a unique name. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are due to have their baby sometime in the spring, Kensington Palace revealed. Like many royal births, speculation as to the name the couple will choose will be rife. Often Britons place bets on likely names, adding all the more excitement to a royal birth. While the royals often choose traditional names, one expert has revealed Queen Elizabeth II may allow Meghan and Harry to opt for a more unique name. 
Prince William and Kate Middleton have chosen names already given to royals for their three children. They have George, 5, Charlotte, 3, and Louis, who was born in April. But Hollywood actress Meghan could be free to choose a name inspired by her own upbringing. Carolyn Harris, author of Raising Royalty, 1000 Years of Royal Parenting, told Vogue Australia, The further down the line of succession, the more likely you are to have a more unique or untraditional name. We see, from the diversity of names among the Queen's descendants, that the Queen does seem willing to allow the descendants to choose their own names. While Kate and William's children are high up in ranks of royal lineage it is thought that there is an expectation for them to have a traditional name. However, those further down the line of succession have more unusual names. This includes Princess Beatrice, 8 in line, and Princess Eugenie, 9th. Princess Anne named her daughter Zara, 17th in line, and her son Peter, 14th in line. Zara's children are named Mia and Lena and Peter's children are named Savannah and Isla. Could Meghan be inspired to choose a name popular in her home country? The most popular names in the U.S. in 2017 were Liam, Noah, William, James and Logan for boys and Emma, Olivia, Ava, Isabella and Sophia for girls. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will have to follow this birthing rule that Kate Middleton and Prince William followed. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge chose to wait a couple of days before announcing the names of their children. Kensington Palace Twitter account announced the birth of each child and the gender, but did not reveal the name straight away. <laughs>